This is the Berman Method podcast featuring Dr. Jake Berman and physician assistant Jenny Berman. We are here to treat problems and not symptoms. Disclaimer, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and not to treat anyone or to give medical advice. If you are interested in any information that we are giving and would like to use this for yourself, we recommend that you contact your primary care physician or reach out to us and ask us questions about yourself specifically. Enjoy. And we are rolling, baby. The Berman Method Podcast. David against Goliath. We don't want you to be a victim of the corporate medical system. Take your own health in your own hands. Dr. Jake Berman here with... Jenny Berman, physician assistant. What is happening? We're here. We're here. We're ready Monday to go. Morning. Yes. All jacked up and ready to drop some truth bombs. What are you jacked up on? Not Mountain Dew. The gym? Yeah. Life? Monday. Monday? Yes, Monday. A great start to the week? I don't know why people don't like Mondays. Monday is your first chance at getting it right. It's opportunity. Yeah, Monday is the best day. We wake up and we have opportunity. Yeah, there's that saying, I really could use a day between Saturday and Sunday. I'm thinking I could use two Mondays. What do you think about that? Fair enough. I like it. I like the positivity behind it. (sighs) You know, I know it's always nice to have two Mondays because if one doesn't start off on the right foot, then you still have another one. Speaking of that, you know how people say today was a bad day. They're in a bad mood. Today wasn't a good day. Right? The whole day wasn't bad. It really was just about 60 seconds of your day. Something happened during your day and you chose to let that define the rest of your day. The actual incident itself most likely was over and done with in a couple of seconds. Take Road rage, for example, people driving to work and somebody cuts you off. That whole incident is over in less than five seconds. And now all of a sudden you have a bad day. It's true. It's all about perception. I actually, a couple of Mondays ago, had the Mondayest of Mondays to start my day. You had a case of the Mondays? To start my day. But then I was like, you know, this is just, these are just things that are happening. And I can either choose to allow it to predict what the rest of my Monday is going to be like and have a cloud over me for the rest of the Monday. Or I can just say, you know what? Those were things that happened and it's going to be all right. And I am in control of the rest of my day. Yes. I am in control of my attitude. I'm in control. Yeah. It's not a bad day. It was just a bad 10 seconds. (laughs) It was a bad 60 seconds. It's not a bad 24 hours. That's true. And sometimes I, I will admit, sometimes you're like, could really, could one more thing happen? But if that one more thing does happen, it's still going to be all right. It's still going to be all right because if you look at it objectively, the good is really outweighing the bad. It's true. It's yeah. true. So anyways, before we get into the topic that we really wanted to get into today, let's do a quick promo for our health expo that's coming up. 2024 Longevity Expo. So helping you to learn about other brands in town in Naples, Florida that are allowing you to add quality years to your life, to improve your longevity, to help with your overall health and well-being. So on February 23rd at the Bayfront of Naples, which is in downtown Naples, Berman Health and Wellness is putting on a longevity expo with sponsors and vendors so that you can come learn more about your health. What day of the week is it? It is a Friday afternoon from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., February the 23rd, so prime happy hour time. Prime happy hour time, and the weather is actually going to be perfect. It's going to be beautiful, and it's in a prime location, downtown Naples with restaurants, a little cabana bar nearby. It's going to be Right on the water. It's a beautiful spot. Beautiful spot on the water. You can watch the sunset. Yes. Very pretty. And you actually did a lot of work. This is you. You put this on yourself. When you told me that you were going to do this, 
six months ago or a year ago, whenever it was, I was like, wow, this is a big undertaking. I didn't know we were on that level yet. And technically, I don't think we were on the level. However, by doing this, it's putting us on that level to where we are now putting on a health fair, a health expo with other vendors that are coming to promote longevity, promoting the same ideology that we're doing, which is corporate medicine does not have your best interests in mind. There are other alternatives. There are other ways. Absolutely. So we are inviting other vendors and sponsors to come promote their brands, which is also going to help with promoting the natural approach to your health and longevity. So Berman Health and Wellness, Berman Physical Therapy, Berman Golf, of course, will all be there as sponsors to the event. We also will have Osteo Strong as a sponsor for the event as well. Osteo Strong is a business that helps individuals to gain bone density, to improve their DEXA scores, to to get them out of that risk factor of osteoporosis or osteopenia without having to use medications. So that's an awesome brand, especially for a lot of us here in Naples, Florida that need the help to improve bone density. So they are going to be a sponsor again that is OsteoStrong. Nice. We have some vendors as well. We have a Pilates coach, a beauty counter. We have a brand called Higher Self and Sound. Creative Solutions Counseling will be there as well. We have Heal Thyself Institute, which is actually a chiropractic institute. We will have Summy Jewelry, an awesome aesthetics company, 457 Bayfront Aesthetics will be there. Holistic Health and Wellness, which is a pelvic floor physical therapist. We will have Naples Family Fitness, which is a great fitness uh, gym in town, and Spanga, which is also a fitness studio in town that does cycling, strength training, and yoga will be at the event as well. And we are going to have Classic Edge Nail Studio there as well. In addition to the blood donation bus, the One Blood bus drive will also be there as well. Make sure you do that before happy hour starts. Definitely. That's probably <laughs> probably the better option. But we're going to have music. We're going to have giveaways. We have over $10,000 in giveaways at the event as well. Yes, that is what I'm showing up for. I'm only showing up for the giveaways. I really don't care about anything else. Raffles and giveaways, some Everblades tickets that we're giving away as well. That is so much fun. Absolutely a blast going there and watching people get slammed into the glass, eating a delicious hot dog and a oversized beer. It's the best. Hockey's really fun. Yes. So it's going to be a good time. 2 to 7 p.m. on February the 23rd. So it's a Friday afternoon at the Bayfront of Naples. Can't wait. Make sure you pencil it in. It is going to be a blast. This is our first annual. So you can say that you were there at the first one. Ten years later, you're going to see what it develops into. And you'll be like, I remember back when you said you uh, put on your first health expo. That's right. Look at it now. Come put your face on the news. Oh, yeah. The news is going to be there. I can't wait. That's really the reason why I'm showing up. Oh, I know. Get your (laughs) face on the camera. (laughs) That's what you live for. You know, people would never believe that you're an introvert. Yeah, we're, I'm just coming off three days being all by myself, and I left the house twice. You were up in Tennessee with your sister, and you took the girls with you, and I left the house twice for about 17 minutes. Yeah, but you did go out and get yourself some food, so I'm proud of you for that. <laughs> I did. You know what? That kind of ties into what I want to get into today. Okay. Write it down. Write it down. Whatever it is, write it down. Because so often we say we've got all these goals, these plans, these aspirations, these ideas, these visions on what you want to do, what you want to get, what you want to improve, how you want your life to look, but it's not written down. You have to write things down so that you see it. Just the act of writing it down alone exponentially increases the chances that it's actually going to happen. 
So using this weekend, for example, so I did my sensitivity screen again, my food sensitivity screen a month ago or so. Somehow it got lost in the mail, whatever. We ended up finding it. Mm -hmm. And this time my sensitivity screen came back with alternating. I should alternate gluten, dairy, egg, egg. gluten, dairy, and eggs were Mm -hmm. the three gut punches, (laughs) quote unquote gut punches that I had on this sensitivity screen. So it says rotate. It's not an allergy, meaning avoid. It means rotate it. You shouldn't have it as often as I have been having it because I eat egg every day. I eat gluten Friday, Saturday, and usually Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. And dairy too, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday mornings. Right. So by default at our at home, you are completely gluten-free and dairy-free because of the girls and I. So that's just how I cook. That's the only things that we have in the house. I don't even I can't even say that we have one glutinous thing in this entire house. No, nothing is or dairy, actually. No. So no. so Sunday night through Friday. No, morning. Friday night through Sunday morning. No, I'm oh, saying okay. Sunday, the Sunday yeah. night through Friday morning, I'm 100% gluten-free, dairy-free. Mm-hmm. And then starting Friday afternoon, we go on our lunch date and I don't do gluten-free or dairy I don't even think about it. I just order what I want. Mm-hmm. Friday starting at lunchtime through Sunday morning breakfast and then start all over again Sunday afternoon through Friday morning, gluten-free, dairy-free. Anyways, you were gone for the weekend. And right before you left, you challenged me to three weekends in a row of being gluten-free, dairy-free. And I'm going, oh my gosh, does that include beer too? And you said, oh, well, if you want to do it the right way. (laughs) I I didn't know that was negotiable. (laughs) And I'm going going like, damn, how negotiable are my (laughs) non-negotiables? (laughs) That's right. So you were gone this weekend and I made a plan. I actually wrote it down what I was going to do because I had to fend for myself and I wanted to stand up to the challenge of going gluten-free, dairy-free. So I wrote down what I was going to do. And egg-free. I didn't say I was going egg-free. Oh, okay. Just gluten-free, dairy-free. Okay. Okay. That was your challenge. Yeah, it was. You're right. You're right. Okay. So I wrote down Friday at lunch, I'm going to have Jersey Mike's on a gluten-free roll. Friday night, I'm going to have Chipotle, a salad, not a burrito like I normally would have. Mm -hmm. Saturday for lunch, had another Jersey Mike's. (laughs) (laughs) Two Jersey Mike's? I had two Jersey Mike's on gluten-free rolls. Okay. Saturday night, I was in a conundrum. I'm going, what in the world am I going to eat tonight that's gluten-free, dairy-free. And I'm going, ah, oh, I really want to go to Off the Rock because they have this amazing wrap that I love getting there. It's called the Hot Chick. I get the Hot Chick in a wrap. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go there because I'll be tempted to get it. So I ended up going to Tavern on the Bay and getting the Tuna Poke Bowl. Which is at Bayfront. At Bayfront. Where we're having our event. Well, our where our health fair is going to be. So you got the tuna poke bowl. Did you get it with no soy sauce? No, that's why I said I'm getting to the point. Oh, okay. Getting to the point. Got it. Got it. Awesome. (laughs) So then Sunday morning, I was going to go to First Watch after the gym, and I was going to get my quinoa bowl, and they have Parmesan cheese that they put on, and I'm like, I'm going to order it without the Parmesan cheese. So gluten-free, dairy-free, and I succeeded with all of those. And I was 99% gluten-free for the whole entire weekend because the freaking soy sauce sure has some gluten in it. But I think I did pretty damn good. Didn't have a single beer the whole entire weekend. I'm like, okay. That's good. The most important part was that I actually wrote it down because here's what happens. I did not write down what I was going to do Saturday night. So I literally, for an hour, am debating where am I going to go for dinner tonight? What am I going to eat for dinner tonight? Am I going to try to cook something at home? Am I going to order delivery? Am I going to go to a restaurant? For an hour, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do, and all of the bad things kept popping up in my head. I'm like, oh, I could go to Off the Rock and get this wrap. Oh, I could go do this. I could do that. I could order this pizza. I could do anything, really. I could go to Jersey Mike's and get a glutinous roll. I could go back to Chipotle and get a burrito. I could do all these things. I'm like, no, 
stay strong. And then I ultimately decided on the tuna poke bowl. The reason why this is important, I wrote down everything else that I was going to do. I did not write down what I was going to do Saturday night. And that was the most challenge that I had for the entire weekend. All the other meals, there was no challenge at all because I had written them down. That's right. And we talk about that regularly with us working out is I will write our workouts the night before. So last night I wrote this morning's workout tonight. I'll write tomorrow's workout. I always write them down the night before in the notes section on my phone and then share them with Jake because we don't work out together at the same, you know, one of us goes to the gym, one works out at home since the kids are here sleeping. But I always will share the workout with you we will go separately and do it. But the point of that is, is writing down the workout the night before, make sure that we are very efficient with our time that we have at the gym, because we're not standing there trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do next? It makes us efficient, but it also holds us accountable. Because sometimes my brain is more powerful the night before when I write the workouts than it would be the next morning when I'm deciding what I'm actually going to do. That's a really important thing to note right there because this just happened yesterday morning. Sunday morning, I'm in the gym and it was time for me to do my monthly testing. Jenny and I have been doing monthly testing. So at the first of the month, we do how many push-ups can you do in a minute? How many pull-ups can you do without resting? How many double-unders can you do in a minute? And how many leg lifts can you do in a minute? Isn't that the four things? Right. Mm Mm-hmm. And I could not remember what the four things were yesterday morning when I was at the gym because Jenny had not answered my text for whatever reason. I was busy. Yeah, of course you were busy. Yep, you were very busy. (laughs) Yep, very busy. And I didn't remember what it was. Then when I finally did remember what the actual tasks were, I didn't remember what I had gotten the previous month. The reason why that's important is because when you know what you did the previous time and your goal is to beat that, for whatever reason, you push yourself a little bit harder. You try a little bit harder. You go a little bit longer. You take a little bit deeper breath and you push through it. So I'm sitting here going, I don't know what I got last time. I'm just going to try to do the best that I can. So once it got around 50 seconds, so these are 60 second timed things, once it got around 50 seconds, I could feel myself slowing down and I thought about it consciously. I'm like, if I knew what the target was, I would be pushing myself harder right now. Because I don't know what the target is, I'm going to say that I'm passing it right now and I'm just going to coast to the finish line. I didn't know what the target was. Right, right. So as soon as the timer went off, I was angry with myself because I didn't give 110%. And I just knew I didn't give 110% because I didn't know what the target was. So this is me that we're talking about, right? What I'm trying to get at is we humans are by default lazy. Right. When you set the target on the wall, though, when you see it, when you visually see it, it changes something. It changes the way that you go about it. It changes your motivation, your plan of attack. It changes everything because you now you know where you're going. Right. And it's that sense of the accountability, holding yourself accountable. So if this is with a target for work, writing it down, if it is based on your meal plan, writing out your meal plan ahead of time and trying to follow that as closely as you can. And of course, sometimes we have to modify for events that come up or situations that happen. But if we have something written down that we're trying to come as close to what's written down as possible, we will be more accountable in our decision-making process. Love it. Absolutely love it. So we, at the end of this year, we will have 12 different measurements of how we performed over this past year. So on January, this is how many leg lifts I could do in 60 seconds. This is how many push-ups I could do in 60 seconds. In July, this is what the number is now. In August, this is what the number is now. In November, this is what the number is now. Then when December rolls around, I'm going to be looking at January and I'm going to be going, oh man, I did this many in January. Now I'm doing this many. What if I just did an extra one or a two? 
then you can look back on your entire year and you can be like, holy cow, look at what I accomplished in a year. What do you think I can accomplish in 10 years? Right. So often people don't, because you're not writing it down, a year comes and goes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what the heck did I do last year? What do I have to show for it? Am I stronger? Am I more mobile? Am I fitter? Right. Or am I not? We don't have anything to compare to if we're not seeing the data. And that's something we talk about all the time with our clients is we need objective data. Let's put that glucose monitor on you and see what your blood sugar is doing every minute of the day and track as much as you can through that 10-day period so we have the data to see what's causing the blood sugar to rise and fall. Take pictures of what you're eating so it time stamps it and we make sure that you're eating every two to three hours. Just give us some data. Same thing with the golf swings, right? Being able to make measurements on the golf swing to have that objective data on the strength training, have the objective data, write down the numbers. You're too subjective to be objective for yourself. That's the truth right there. You think you're doing better than you actually are. We all think we are younger, stronger, and more mobile than we actually are. This is a perfect example. Today, I'm giving two seminars at two different country clubs in town today. And I do this same thing every single seminar. I take people through three or four movements. And every single time, the statistics are the same. 50% of the people struggle to do things that they didn't think they would struggle with. For example, the hardest one for most people is get down on the ground and get back up again without using your hands. 50% of the people in the audience get down. They don't even think about it. They just go down and get back up again. And when they stand up, they're like, oh, wow, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. 25% of the audience says, absolutely not. Not I'm not even going to try this. And the other 25% of the audience has no problem with it at all. This statistic or this percentage is consistent across every country club that I've gone to for the past two years. Every single country club has the same general percentages when I do this one test. 50% of the people just immediately go down and get down on the ground and get back up again and stand up and say, oh, wow, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because they have not done it in so long. You're so used to using your hands to push off your legs or to push off a chair when you're going to get back up again that you've never even done it. But your brain thinks that you're stronger and more mobile and younger than you actually are because you're too subjective to be objective. Right. So that's why you have to write these things down. That's right. Speaking of which, I need to write down my numbers from this morning's workout. (laughs) <laughs> Did you write yours down? <laughs> we have the workout on the notepad. I need to write down my number. So, and that's the other thing is, you know, when it comes to working out and even to meal plans is something I tell my clients is write your workouts down and then every other month go back to a day two months prior and repeat that day and see are if it's a workout, are you increasing the weights? Are you increasing the reps? Are you increasing the intensity? You have to increase something if you think you're, or if you are going to progress. Same thing with the meal plan. Go back and repeat the day and see how you feel with repeating it. Was it simpler for you? Was it easier to stay on track? Were you able to meet more of your protein goals than you did two months ago? Have something to compare to and really push yourself to grow. I love it. I do that occasionally on the Peloton rides. I'll remember, I'll write down how many kilo cows I got with a particular ride. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I was so hard. And then a month later, I'll try to do it again. And it's not that hard the second time. Right, right. I actually do significantly better with kilo cows the second time. Mental shift. Yeah. That's all it is. Good. 
Awesome. So big take home messages for today is write it down. Whatever it is, write it down. Put it on a little post-it note and put it on your bathroom mirror. Put it on a post-it note and put it on the stove. Put it on the refrigerator. Put it somewhere. What is your goal for today? What is your goal for this week? What is your goal for this month? Write it down. And then write down what you're currently doing. How many air squats can you do in a minute right now? How many push-ups can you do in a minute? How many pull-ups can you do in a minute? Whatever it is, write it down. And then check it again in a month. And that's a key. Check Be it. accountable to yourself to actually repeat it in a month. Yeah, check it again in a month. I'm really proud of us for doing our monthly testing on time two months in a row. Yay! Did you really have doubts? It's different when, uh, like, I actually had to stop and think about that because if it were just up to me, there's a chance that it wouldn't get done. But the fact that there's two of us in it holding each other accountable, I have less doubt that we will do it for all 12 months. Okay. This is like my, I tell myself at the beginning of every month, okay, I'm going to stretch for the end of my five minutes of my workout, every workout. I do a great job for like three days and it's because it's uncomfortable for me. It's an uncomfortable situation. So I have to figure out a way to better hold myself accountable to doing something that's uncomfortable. Writing it down makes that simpler. I think it's uncomfortable for you because you're not moving. Well, it's, I'm not moving, but it actually is uncomfortable. Like some people think stretching is so pleasant. <laughs> it is not pleasant at all to me. Whereas, you know, I would rather go do pull-ups for a minute than sit on a foam roller for a minute. And other people would be like, there's no way I'm getting on a bar and doing pull-ups for a minute. Like that's uncomfortable. So we have to do things that are uncomfortable, but we need a way to hold ourselves accountable to being uncomfortable. And the writing it down is a great way. Love it. So there we go. Love have a wonderful Monday. If your Monday started off as a Mondayest Monday, um, yeah, the Mondayest of Mondays, just know that you are in control. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a bad day. It was just a bad 10 seconds. Think about that one. You didn't have a bad day. There was once an incident that occurred and it lasted for an entire 12 and a half seconds and you let it define the rest of your day. That's right. If your kid challenges you, if you get a flat tire, if your other kid vomits on herself on the way to school. Didn't all of those things happen all in last week? Like an hour. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. Wow. You can do it. This is awesome. I'm down on the ground trying to yank this lug nut out of your tire. Just got these tires brand new. Brand there new. wasn't Two even. Two weeks old. There wasn't even 30 <laughs> miles on these damn things. And this massive screw, I'd almost call it a lug nut, somehow finds its way into the tire. And I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. You're pulling it out and put, trying to plug the tire and you're like, push on my back. <laughs> We're, he's laying on the ground. I'm pushing on his back to plug this darn tire. I was trying to freaking put the plug back into it and I couldn't get it in there. So I'm like, Jenny, sit down and put your feet <laughs> on my back so I have something to push against. <laughs> As I'm in a dress, you're dressed nice because then we have to go to an event right after that. Yeah, we're going a marketing to the event. Treviso <laughs> Bay Health Fair. <laughs> so anyway, just know that you're in control. It's short-lived. Stay yep. positive. You woke up today. And you have opportunity. Just yes. remember that. Yes. Okay, bye. Bye. Ciao. Thank you for subscribing on your social media and podcast platforms to The Berman Method. Dr. Jake Berman with Berman Physical Therapy and Jenny Berman, Physician Assistant with Berman Health and Wellness. You can find more information on our website, www.bermanpt.com for physical therapy, bermanpt.com forward slash wellness for the health and wellness. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and on your podcast platform. So be sure to follow us, like us, subscribe to us. And if you would like any further information, definitely visit our website and reach out to us. You may also find our free reports on the websites as well, where you can download this free information for yourself. Have a great day.